I'm so cozy on the couch, doggies next to me. It's snowing right now and I want to talk to you about Magical Guidance Cards, the deck that I made this year. I'm going to give some context on why I chose the images, why I chose to photograph a mask, for instance, for the shadow card, etc. So let's just get into it. So as you can see right now at moment of filming, I'm halfway through finally um, edging my deck. Anyway, let's actually start with the card where I photographed a mask that is hanging right there between two windows in my home. And the words are shadow, ego, and mask because mask itself obviously has, has plenty of meaning and symbolism. Now, I completely forgot where this mask came from. It's, it's very known, this style, so if you just know it off the top of your head, feel free to comment. I bought this, I don't know, many years ago off of a website, actually, and I fell in love with it because of the coloration, of course, but mostly it looks just freaking badass, obviously, right? Um, is it Indonesia? I'm not sure. Anyway, we have this darker figure kind of coming out of this lighter face. So it looks like three different phases. And you know, I actually don't know the meaning of the mask, but I know that cultural masks like these, usually they are spiritual or maybe even considered magical and that sometimes they even depict gods or goddesses. So looking at the beauty that is this mask and the badassness that it looks like, you know, it, it brings forth for me the question of shadow and maybe even ego, even though I obviously don't want to villainize this, but you know, you can't deny that it, it, it looks super fierce. And you know, the reason that I love masks, I have three right there and I have another one. And I grew up in a house where there were big, big original African masks on the wall. They used to belong to my French grandparents. My grandfather used to be a head of la gendarmerie. So he was a colonel. And due to his work, him and his whole family had to go to wherever basically they were told, right, back in the day. So they actually lived in Africa for a while. They lived in, let me see, in Algeria, but then also they lived in, for instance, Berlin, <laughs> but they also lived in Burundi. So that's where they got some Malachite and definitely the beautiful original masks. Obviously, as an adult in my own home, I developed my own taste, but the mask thing, that stuck because it's, it's beautiful and it's, I love the decoration on the walls. And you don't have to be spiritual or know anything about it necessarily to appreciate them. You just kind of, you look at them and you feel what they're about. So this, could potentially be, I don't want to say God, but maybe entity that does show a different side of you. Either way, that's the whole concept or whole idea of wearing a mask, right? Making a mask, wearing a mask, putting on the mask, becoming this entity. The next card, uh, fractal, key, gateway, portal, open, sacred geometry, and grid. Yeah. Basically, every term to not call it mandala or mandala. I don't know how to say it now, but mandala sounds American. <laughs> but um, I, I don't know why I don't like that word. I'm not quite sure. But whatever I do when I do this, and I posted a picture on Instagram a little while ago, where I actually charged this card with its own fractal or crystal grid. And hagstone grid actually when i do this it's to protect something or to open a door so you know that's why you get open and obviously you're working with some sort of geometry some sort of shape some sort of intentionality on how you place objects around usually something else it's kind of how you build things and 
all of these little items are things that I have either, either found or collected in another way, bought throughout the years. And um, <laughs> my partner looked at these cards and, you know, he said, great job. But one of his kind of, not criticism, but rather questions was, well, you really need a lot of stuff to use this deck. For instance, we have wand, cauldron, you know what I mean? What if you don't have a wand? Obviously, feel free to, hello, use your witch finger. We all have one right here. <laughs> Sorry to be so cheesy, but yeah. Um, and then what about a cauldron? You could even just do this. This can be your cauldron, right? But you can take it even further, and everybody has heard about this. Just visualize it. This can be your astral altar. Magical guidance cards, right? It, it is meant for me to use the items, magical items that I have, and make whatever isn't magical in my idea actually that, to use it and to infuse it and to really, you know, it's a hands-on call to action pack of cards for me. Use it in any way that you want. I said in the flip through video, feel free to take out cards if you don't like them or you don't see the purpose or you don't use, for instance, a wand or anything of the sorts. So, you know, take it out. It's, it's really no rules. It's 90 cards, but it can be 50 cards. It doesn't matter at all. Feel free to make different little oracle decks. Read it as an oracle deck. Interpret the cards however you like. You know, I mean, there's, there's quite a lot to go off of, honestly. Again, if you are in the middle of nowhere, all you have is these cards, or if you have nothing at the moment, or you work with nothing physical, nothing material, uh, in your craft, you can still use this deck. It doesn't require you to buy or get anything. It just suggests. And then, of course, you can use your astral cauldron. You can use your astral altar. You can make an astral altar if that's maybe a new concept to you, right? <laughs> I already explained a little bit about this card in the flip through, but uh, something extra, maybe some Finnish folk or even Dutch folk will recognize these tiny bottles. They are actually Salmari bottles. And yes, I took out the label and stuff so you won't see, but of course, how could I not? In the darkest deck that was ever made, honestly, how could I not use the blackest drink that you can find. So this tastes like salty licorice and it's alcoholic. It's a shot. And I don't know what's going on, guys. I mean, I'm in my freaking mid thirties, but with my friend group, we are kind of obsessing over this drink. And I even dressed up as a Somali for Halloween this year because it's kind of a non-costume and still it was funny. So <laughs> this is the actual color of the tree that I photographed at night in winter time. I remember doing it. I remember getting out of the bus earlier than my stop because I had seen the trees with the beautiful purple light. And I decided next time I would pass that spot, I would bring my camera, get out the bus there and take a photo. So that one wasn't edited so much. And this, of course, it's still a tree, but you can consider it to be a tree, you know, upside down like roots. So an astral tree, and this signifies the realm of the low, dark, below, descend. And then I have its little sister, the above card. As you can see, this is actually the photo that is edited. So I changed the colors, rise, high, and then light. So we have dark and light. This would be a good visual for meditation, right? Here, this is heal and fix. I have some, what I consider healing crystals. And right there in the middle with the rose petals is actually a lock of my hair. The protection, very easy spell that I did. And it's a home protection spell. And actually I shared this on Patreon. I don't remember which tier, but I had to redo it. I felt the need to get some extra protection. So this was actually pre having redone it. You can kind of tell by how loose 
these little knots are in the corner because when I redid it, I added some candle wax to keep it in place and really seal it in there. I use wax as a tool as well to see, I mean, I think most practitioners do these days, but I have in my candle card also the word wax to signify that. You don't have to necessarily only light the candle. It suggests to actually use the wax of the candle to maybe seal something. This I believe you've seen. This is my tarot card. Obviously I wanted to use a tarot deck that no longer had copyright. You never know, right? And um, this is kind of beautiful as well. It's the first Dutch Rider Waite Smith. It's black and white and the backs have this beautiful ankh. All the cards are discolored. So I've actually stopped using this deck as a client deck because at the store when I fanned out the cards you could see uh, the backs of some cards being very stained and others less. And so most of the people would actually be influenced by that. They wanted to get the older looking cards, the stained ones, the vintage ones. And so I was kind of at some point giving very similar readings. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's why I went, that one of the reasons also, a really tarot behind the scenes kind of thing that I went back to Centennial. This is my Servitor card guardian and companion. Now these obviously are plastic Halloween costume witch fingers. My first servitor card was before I had this concept of I have to take every photo myself. Also as a rule every photo needs to be taken out of the daylight. So evening time, night time even. This was at night time. Uh, my first Servitor card was actually a photo that I had found online, you know, one of those royalty free ones. But I had trouble making the deck consistent and personal, honestly. I had to make my own. The first photo that I found was actually this weird hallway. It was a computer thing, I think, with all these squares. And so it looks like either you're coming out or you're going in, which made sense because it's a system in a system in a system. You're kind of basically making your own system to get something done, to go through that portal. But actually, when you think about it, a servitor is an extension of yourself. So when you look at these witch fingers, obviously they make my hand look much longer, but you can still see the clear difference between the human hand and then the extra stuff that's been added but that you wear. It's my right hand also so it's like directed. I, I'm really very much about that but also I am right-handed so it makes sense to me. So yeah I hope that was fun to know. Okay this is the compass card, compass map direction. Sometimes you just want to map out literally physically map out where you are, what's going on. I have a whole video, an old one, of how to make a map of your tarot reading, etc. And then direction, it's also, of course, the north, south, east and west, or whatever. And compass can also signify that you find something, or something finds you. Now, you see, we have the little red arrow here pointing that way, and maybe you guys haven't noticed yet, but this little ball is actually a magnet. And in this round dish, you know, this of course shows, if, in case you don't know, I don't know, uh, when you put a magnet, the, the arrow naturally goes towards it. It's being pulled towards the magnet. So this signifies that I, as the practitioner here, has the power to attract. To change direction. A beautiful view of an Amsterdam canal. These are carvings that I've made. Um, this right here with the snake is actually a carving of a of a vision or a dream rather. I think. I don't know. It's hard to remember. Am I the only one who does this? Who draws sigils on the soles of shoes and boots? It's a really old trick, but it's nice because you're walking and charging with every step, but you're walking on whatever you are putting out there. Did that make sense? Okay, here 
I made a difference between jar and pouch. Might be the same for some people, but here this is fabric, stitching, pouch. Then I have another card that says jar and bottle. So for me, it's different. I feel like jar and bottle, you're really trying to contain something. It's an actual container and a pouch isn't in my mind. A pouch is softer, it breathes. Scrying, pendulum, crystal ball, and black mirror. This is, I had been looking for that for years. One of those round mirrors, of course round this way, but also round in its, it's considered a witch mirror to some folk. So that's why it's in this picture. <laughs> Here we go, the candle card with also wax as one of the things that you can use this for. Now this is of course one of those super dark cards, but um, maybe you can see just right here, this really was the candle, it's finished now, it's been a while, <laughs> it's been a few months, um, was the, on my altar to represent me because it was standing on this little mirror, so there you go, reflects it's me, and then the thing that I pointed out just now is again a lock of my hair. I like to to work with hair. This thing right here, play, enjoyment, game of chance. This is a ride of a fair. It says magic magic. Now I edited the hell out of this. Honestly just uh, where the where the words are because I don't know if you guys know this, maybe the duchies will recognize it, this ride is actually called Magic Mouse. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> but I wasn't going to have Magic Mouse in the deck. So I edited it and it says Magic Magic now, which is pretty fucking cool to me. Um, but actually the reason I went to this fair in Vesta Park, it's right next door for me, is because the year before I had by accident filmed a little something that said play. Now, since the whole lockdown stuff and people making less money, including the fairs, obviously, they changed some stuff and had to cancel, take away some of the rides. So the one that said play in neon flashy letters was gone. But then I saw, well, obviously I brought my camera, I saw a sign that said magic. And I thought, wow, well, that's that might be even better because I'm going to have the word play on the back of the card, right? As one of the, the things that you can do. Enjoyment and game of chance. Okay, here we have another lock of my hair, but it's knotted. Let's not talk about that anymore. I have my Malachi eggs that obviously I got from my grandparents in an actual bird's nest that I found in the woods. When I found it in the woods, obviously it was abandoned, but somehow I felt guilty for taking it with me. But now it's on my altar and you know, it's there's so much symbolism in, in there. And an animal actually made that, you know, that's so cool to me. This is an assault, cleanse, protect, harbor and hold card. For some reason I felt guilty. So the rest of the walk through the woods, I made sure to pick up every piece of trash that I saw. <laughs> So I did something back for the woods somehow. I felt like I took something, so I had to give something back. Now, another thing. I have cleanse and clean as prompts, as words in the deck. Let's face it, as witches, we cleanse and clean a lot, okay? So this one makes the most sense to have cleanse. And then the other one, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I also have clean, which then also makes sense, right? Because cleanse, you can go all smoke cleanse, but you look at your working space and it's unkept. So clean can be a really good magical act as well. Sweep it away. Oh, it's probably broom anyway. Then we also have protect and protection. I chose to have both in the deck. Again, it's just with those two words, clean and protect or cleanse and protection. Protect. I mean, there's, there's just so much about the craft that is about protection we cleanse, we protect, it's so much part of the daily stuff, basically, that I thought, 
it doesn't hurt to have a similar word twice in the deck. Here, positive magic, attract, manifest. This little ball right here is magnetite. Yeah, oil color, you know, oil stain colors. Don't ask me which book this is. I don't remember. <laughs> yes, this is my wand and I'm, I won't apologize for it. I know that it's an actual tool, maybe to split wood. It is a sacred tool for me. I thrifted it years ago, 50 cents, I remember. And I held it in my hands and it just felt completely right. And I thought, wow, this is my wand. This is my wand. This is the extension of, you know, my intention. And um, <laughs> I'm laughing because of the words extension, intention. But I'm not so scared or precious about it that I did not use it as an actual wood splitting tool when I changed my altar table. A late, late night walk with Doggy got me this card. Rebel or rebel, unconventional, break the rules. This makes sense, right? With the, the structure and then these vines, alive and green, growing over it. I'm not trying to take the mystical away, but the invocation card is a lamp. Yeah, I love it, obviously, because you see the pentagram and then the inverted one and also the pentagon, is that what it's called, the shape, right? Also knowing that it's supposed to be a light, I think that kind of works. Obviously here in the chaos, nothing, void, stillness card, I am trying to represent on my altar the cosmic egg with the black obsidian yoni egg that I don't use as a yoni egg, but just as this symbolism. And you know, holding black obsidian can be quite nice. Then with the snake candle holder, that just totally makes sense to me. These words of the spirit board, which again, you don't have to work with a spirit board. You don't have to have a spirit board or a Ouija board, right? To work with magical guidance cards. But the words say spirit board, ancestor, example, legacy, you. Now that might confuse some folks, but the thought behind this is a lot of us do work with ancestors, right? Or your own personal history. So then there's also travel, astral travel, time travel, etc. kind of involved here. So when you think about it, when you work with ancestors, you don't only have to go the known route, if you know what I mean, the popular route, where it's really just about your blood relatives. First of all, you can have family that isn't blood, like I don't know, if you're a writer, for instance, every writer that came before you. If you're a dancer, every wonderful dancer that came before you. I don't know, it's just kind of about channeling the people that you feel are a part of you or that you, that paved the way for you, in a sense. But then you can take it even further and think that you, even though you are still here, obviously, in physical form, you are, in a sense, already an ancestor. Does that make sense? Because it, time is non-linear. Time does its own thing. And so why would you not see your own timeline, wherever you are in your head, your own past or present or future? You could be your own example. You could be your own ancestor. I feel like it's about the legacy that you are leaving behind. Does that mean that all I'm trying to say is <laughs> live your best life? You know what I mean. Live your life according to your own values. Do the best that you can right now. And so you're actually living the life that you are preaching about. Your original, most authentic self is what you're expressing. I feel like I'm, as always, kind of, no, not as always, but I often do that. I kind of circle around 
something that I'm trying to pinpoint and when the camera's rolling, mm, I have trouble doing so. But if you know what I'm talking about, please again, do me a favor, fill in the blanks. But I did put in ancestor because yes, ancestor work, we love that. But then there's also example. Who is your example? But then you can be an example, not just to others, but also to yourself in a weird way. Does that make sense? And then legacy. And then finally, the word is you. Because doing ancestor work, after all, we are still working with ourselves. Because all of those ancestors, blood relatives or not, you did come from them in a way, in one way or another. Almanac, witch's wheel, time of the year, and stars. Now, obviously, time of the year can be a season, can be a sabbat, esbat, witch's wheel, right? And then stars can be, of course, astronomy or astrology, whatever you feel is most useful to you at the moment. And almanac, I actually have a few of those where you flip to the page of the day and it tells you something about the day. Um, so different books work in different ways, but that's the idea of this card. And of course, work with it however you want. This was kind of perfect. Again, not to take away the mystical, but it was kind of a first decision of photographing a piece of me, right, in this photo. Because if you don't know, or if you can't tell, this is my hand. And I believe it's one of the first pictures that I did in this way, because I tried really hard to not photograph myself for the deck. Now, um, I do have two photos with me in it, but you won't be staring at my face, so I think it's fine for anybody to use it. But at first, I didn't even want to show skin, basically. But you should see the amount of hands that made it into this deck. I kind of like my hands. I don't know. <laughs> this one, I wore a glove beautiful leather dark red glove that I have. Four, protection, circle, secure, warding, and repel evil eye. It turns out beautifully, of course, in symbolism as well, because I'm wearing a glove, and so the glove is protecting me as well. And this, in case you're unfamiliar, it's, um, I didn't know it was called this way because I'm not Italian, but I'm from Corsica. And of course, Corsica has been Italian for X amount of time. But in Italian folklore, it's called Melocchio. So you kind of do the horns to repel the evil eye. So we do that in Corsica as well, but we just call it le mauvais oeil, right? So that's French for evil eye. I don't know what it's called in Corsican language, I don't speak that, unfortunately. Apparently, if you understand Italian, you also understand Corsican, depending on which region you are from. All of that is part of my heritage, and that is what that is. So it's not anything scary. <laughs> it's actually to repel the evil eye. And how I've learned the evil eye is a thing, because apparently I had it as a baby, okay? And this witch in the village did a little thingy with oil and water and a prayer over my head to take it off. <laughs> my mom also had the evil eye when she was born. As you can tell, I don't know the ins and outs, but how you get it is when somebody constantly compliments you, and this is believed that it attracts the devil or evil forces, basically, and so you when you don't end all the compliments with que Dieu la bénisse, that God blesses her, then it's thought that you might attract these evil forces. So when the person compliments you or your child or whatever, and they don't end the compliment with que Dieu la bénisse, you do the horns. You do the horns. And um, some folk do the horns to the person, and some folks do the horn to redirect the negativity to the underworld. Liminal. This is my attic. Isn't it old and spooky? I live in an apartment building that was built in 1901. 
Yes. And I went to the archives and etc. the Amsterdam archives, because I love that stuff to figure out who were the first people who lived here, what did they do for a living, etc. Apparently, I don't know why, but the first family moved in, in only in 1904. So maybe they had a different, I don't know how that works. It was built in 1901 and 1904, I guess they were ready for people to live here. And uh, it's a small, it's a tiny apartment. There were 10 of them here. And I have no idea what this work is called. It's not Teller, but the family that lived here first, they might still be here. I don't know. But basically they wrote down like this or like this, I don't know, <laughs> the diction of somebody else. Forget I sent anything, but if you know what I mean, that was their job. I used to be obsessed with this as a kid. This, this is a kaleidoscope and for the longest time between early childhood and adulthood, I couldn't find this same toy. All the kaleidoscopes that I saw, not that I was actively looking for one, but whenever I happened to see one at a store or whatever in somebody's house, you could see the little mirror pieces in there. It wasn't concealed very well. And you could see the loose beads inside. So it didn't have the same magical effect that this has because this you can turn and the world changes. So maybe gift your little nephew a kaleidoscope, a real one for Christmas. As a kid, I definitely loved it, is all I'm saying. This Create, Make, Craft, Begin card. This is so funny because it was after a storm and I was walking in the evening through a park and I stumbled upon this. This is one of those street lights with, somebody had done this, a group of people, I have no idea, maybe you know but it's in Amsterdam. They had put a lot of these fallen tree branches around and over this lantern. So pretty interesting. I actually love this little photo. It's of this very safe, it's not dangerous, this fireworks, these little sticks. Now it looks like a little creature going, yeah. <laughs> so I really love that. I love the results. Really all I did for this card was to uh, make the colors a little warmer so the red tones come through a little bit more, but yeah, kind of perfect. And it's all happening. It comes from this kind of a rock and roll term, but like hippie term, where you go, this time is magical. And well, I'm all about that. This is a little malachite box that I use as a worry box. What you do is you write down your worries one by one on little pieces of paper, which you can see pictured here as well, and you fold them up, if you want, traditionally, away from you, right? And you put them in the box, put the lid on it, put it somewhere on your altar, and you don't think about it anymore. You forget about it. So you forget about your worries this way. Uh, anybody can do it. You don't have to be into magic at all to do these types of things, right? It's just so easy. Um, the funny thing is, every single time when I feel good and rested and, you know, just in a good mood and everything is going really well and smoothly in my life, I'm at the altar, I look at the into the worry box and I'm surprised to see the amount of little papers folded up in there. But then even without knowing what they are, it's kind of like sigil work where you're supposed to forget the meaning of it. You burn them one by one in your cauldron and you say goodbye to those worries once and for all. That's basically how it works. That's not how life works, but that's how this spell works. So I believe it does have definitely some positive influence on how we see daily life, how we perceive things. And uh, this is a malachite box, obviously. How fancy am I? This is a vintage one, uh, or antique actually, that my grandparents gave me. I was talking about that earlier. And then here, this is one of the last cards that I made. This is a geode that I have in my home. And this is actually, um, 
I forgot the name of the flower. I'm not a very flower person, but often these types of flowers, they only bloom once and then the plant kind of dies. Now, I'm, I'm not much of a flower person, not much of a plant person either. I wish I was. I don't have the green thumb, okay? But it happened by itself that this flower that a student gave me, love that, bloomed again two years after it had bloomed, bloomed for the first time when she gifted me the flower. I hadn't done anything special to it. I just kept watering it. And then all of a sudden they they started blooming again so that made perfect sense for this prompt which is recharge energize yourself and refresh a spell because don't we need that inspiration in a magical practice deck to not only do new things to do new spell to make new intentions but sometimes you need a little reminder of hey you know that thing that you did a month ago it needs refreshing so get right on that, refresh that spell, just do it again, right? And then coming from the perspective that you have now, a month later. That was hopefully my not too long or too rambly explanation of some of the cards. I hope that I answered some questions that you had. And I want to thank you all. Thank you so much. Everything, if you're interested in the deck or my Patreon, whatever, is linked below. Definitely, it helps me out so much that you support my work in any way, shape, or form. If you're not in a position or, you know, whatever, to uh, support financially, so by buying a deck or becoming a patron, then you can also like, comment, and share these videos of mine that I put a lot of work into. So, you know, that's just a way of showing your appreciation. I know that I appreciate you for sure. So have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next week. Bye.